So today we continue with verse 30. And this now begins uh, two, two uh, very famous verses we were just saying to get together. Very famous verses about morality, about goodness, about behaving well and, and behaving badly. And it teaches us, it teaches us a very, very important lesson about what morality is in bhakti and how much this idea of morality differs from Western, uh, morality. And I can say just to be very simple and, and very short that immoral in bhakti is anything that leads us away from the divine. And moral is anything that leads us to the heart and leads us to Radharam. But it will see, as we see, it will begin, it'll get a bit more complicated in the report and in the verse. So the verse reads, even if one who commits the most abominable actions, the most terrible actions, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated. Even if one commits the most, the most abominable actions, if he is engaged in devotional service, he should be considered saintly because he is properly situated, he or she, of course. So this word sudurat sharu is the one who's doing terrible things, wicked things, evil things, immoral things. Sudurat sharu in the verse, which they translate, which Prabhupada translates, one who commits the most abominable actions. And what this verse says is quite extraordinary. It says that if you are a pure devotee, it is impossible for you to be also a sudarachara, committing terrible actions. A fully engaged devotee cannot do evil, cannot do wrong. And even if someone commits a terrible sin, if he or she commits it while carrying out devotional service, budgete in the verse, to God, without any deviation, then he or she is saintly. So not only are you a saint when you're doing evil things and committing de- uh, and doing devotional service, you're not sinning uh, at all. Now, this is very controversial verse. And there are lots of ways of reading it. And I can tell you three different ways of understanding this one before I'll tell you how I think, and and how probable it is. Some say it means that if a devotee is good intention, if a devotee has sincerity, if a devotee is trying to do do good, then there can be no sin. That it lies in the intention, what we want to do. It doesn't lie in what actually we do or what happens after we do something. Another interpretation says that if we think a devotee, a pure devotee, is doing bad things, it's because we don't understand the logic. We don't understand what's actually going on. We don't have a big enough view of of what's going on, that actually by doing devotional service, there's an invisible system that's working which includes the terrible thing, and therefore it's not wrong. And then a third point of view says, well, if the devotee is doing devotional service, then all is forgiven. That because there's devotional service going on, then God forgives and it's not evil. So these are the three... uh, if you like, main points of view, and sometimes they get very confused. Let's start and look at the purport by, by Prabhupada. He says, 
The word sudracharo used in this verse is very significant. And we should understand it properly. So the verse says that everything lies in devotion, in the love. That, that we do not become beloved devotees by our acts, but, but by our attitude, but by, by the love in our hearts. Whether we're acting or not, it's what is in our heart which makes us devotees. So in some sense, we're doing our actions with love. And in this sense, it does not really matter what we do. That sins don't have any meaning because love is the context in which we're doing our acts. So if you love purely in life, in relation to friends, in relation to, to partner or to lover, to God brothers, then you are already a saint. And I think, like I said before, this shows a really important difference between bhakti and Western culture, but also Abrahamic religion, so Christianity and Judaism and Islam. Because the question is not what is morality. It's not a question of what's good or bad, good or evil. That would be Old Testament Christian. God says that's bad, don't do that. That's good, do that. It's a, way, it's a question of what the f- shape of goodness is. It's a matter of what the svarup is. What is the svarup of goodness? What is the svarup of the divine? That, the answer to that question will tell us what our path is. So the Old Testament or the Torah, like Gurudev tells us, or the Quran gives us rules, but there's no relation. There's no relation to God. There's no compassion. There's no feeling. The rules are given between two beings that have no association. The rule is cold and dead. Just think of Moses who goes to the book of Exodus, goes up on the mountain to get the rules from God in the, in the Jewish and Christian myths. It's so cold and dead, these rules that are written on stone. So the law that comes from God is a law, of course, because God has power. But it's not a law that has a relation to our soul. So in this understanding, breaking that law cannot be immoral. Breaking a relation, a spiritual relation through the heart, that would be immoral. So we don't talk about it as immoral. So breaking a cold law, which has no association, is immoral, but it lies, the immorality lies in the coldness and not in the law. And a, and a, a rule that comes through love is not a rule that needs to be forced upon us. It's a rule that we already want to follow because we have love. It comes to us through love. God's will comes to us to us through love, and it's only natural for us to do us do it, to obey it. There's no question of violating it. It would be impossible for us to do this. So whereas God in Exodus doesn't even talk to Moses about the laws, there's no constant conversation. He goes and gets the tablets and, and brings them. But for Bhakti, the rules are already in the love, the rules of love. They're already written in my heart. And they're written because in my heart because I'm associated with God. I'm associated with Radharani. My soul is part and parcel of God. So God is already there and everything that God wishes for this world is already there. I can't imagine thinking something that is not already divine if I'm a pure devotee. So the question of morality becomes a question of increasing the purity of our hearts and not bending our willpower to follow the law. It's a matter of softening and not a matter of hardening. All the morality of the world is already in our soul. 
what we lack, if we lack anything, we who are imperfect devotees, what we lack is realization of the soul, realization of who we are. Once we realize who we are as spiritual beings, then morality is only nature itself. Remember what Gurudev teaches us that the only actual sin, according to Mary Magdalena, mm. is to not is to forget that we have a soul, or not to realize that we have a soul. That's the only morality for bhakti. To not to be blind to the beauty of our own soul, which is a reflection of the beauty of, of God. So for bhakti, the rules aren't outside us, if there are rules, they're inside us. So to act morally means to act in relation to our pure hearts. And the only challenge, the very great challenge is to purify our hearts, to purify the divine in us. This is of course a very great challenge for everyone. So realize the divine love in us, that is what being moral means. When we fully realize that, realize our svarup, our spiritual form, then it's impossible for us to be immoral, or to even think what the immoral is. Prabhupada then continues. When a living entity is conditioned, he has two kinds of activities. One is conditional, the other is constitutional. So we probably know this purport expresses the two sides of any living being, the Sadakadeya and the Siddhadeya. Any conditioned being living in the material world is living at least in part in Sadakadeya. But any being with just a drop of soul consciousness, just a suspicion of divinity, just a hint that comes in a daydream for just one second, that small bit of pain is already the sign that a tiny bit of that living being is in Siddhartha. So any living being, says Prabhupada, is both conditioned and constitutional. And the only variation, the only difference is how much, where. But what is beautiful about bhakti, and this reminds us of what Gurudev teaches about, there's no qualification necessary. There's one tiny little qualification necessary. And that's that we have a tiny little suspicion of love, that we have an experience of love, just a spark, just by the glance of another person, or the beauty of a flower, or the taste of a delicious food, when we feel just that spark of the divine love, then we know we are, the door is open, if only a tiny bit, to a path towards spiritual perfection, towards our constitutional identity, towards our siddhate. Only the slightest hint. It's really so inspiring, this fact, that in the darkest of hours, if you see a child smile and you feel anything in your stomach, that you know that there's a door for you, you know there's a path for you, because this is the peek into your own sitadeha, your own constitutional position, your own svarup. Everyone has a svarup, unique. Even the most skeptical, the most dark, the most pessimistic person. And all we need is the spark to see it and find our way to a tingle of happiness, a little poke in the stomach. And we know that there's a way. Mahaprabhu told Sanatana Goswami once that a Vaishnava's body should never be considered material 
but rather transcendental and full of spiritual bliss. So any Vaishnava bhakti, that includes all of you, is not only material, is also a part of the transcendental. And this is the part of you that you want to follow and develop and deepen and realize. So realization means coming close to that, coming closer to knowing ourselves, to knowing who we truly are. Prabhupada carries on now. <clears throat> As for protecting the body, he says, or abiding by the rules of society and state, so the rules, the laws of society, certainly there are different activities, even for devotees, in connection with the conditional life. And such activities are called conditional. We're living in the material world. We have to follow some of the material rules. But it's important, nonetheless, to remember the distinction. The constitutional position is Farup. Even the part, it's maybe small part, part of Farup that we know is internal, spiritual. That's the part of the Siddhadeya. And that, that is our essence. We all have that. We all have that constitution. Even if it's hidden for most of us. For some of us, it's hidden very much. But like I said, we can always see a tiny, tiny spark of it. But the conditional, the social, the social laws, the etiquettes, the traffic laws, the things we must do in our day-to-day material life, these are external. These are material. These are changing. They're coming, they're going, they're disappearing. So if we cling on to them, if we focus on mastering them, being the best of social laws, being the best uh, uh, influencer on Instagram, being the best communicator in, in social parties and whatnot, these will disappear. Whereas they'll be fleeting and changing, but the Siddha day will never change. So it's uh, far better to invest our energy into developing a relation to our Siddha day than to our Sadiq day. And then, of course, back to the Suduruta, the evil acts, the one who does evil acts. These evil acts are external. They're relative, they're related to the external, conditional Sadiq day. When we relate to the Siddhadeya, then, as I said before, morality is absorbed into the heart. Prabhupada says these are social requirements, they're social rituals, customs, and values. And we need to attend to them to some degree, but we must not become confused that they are our goal. And then Prabhupada continues. Besides these, the living entity who is fully conscious of his spiritual nature and is engaged in Krishna consciousness or the devotional service of the Lord has activities which are called transcendental. So the one who is fully conscious of his svaru, spiritual nature, has only transcendental activities. The one who is partially conscious of the svaru has partially transcendental activities. And so, so the transcendental activities, now Prabhupada continues, such activities are performed in his constitutional position. And they are technically called devotional service. Say Devotional service means service and service. Service and service. According to Shabbatan Sayyid Prabhupada. Ah. According to Shabbatan Sayyid Prabhupada, devotional service means service and service. Very high definition. Very beautiful. When I was in this call, you want to understand like this. You want to take this question? Oh. When I was in this call, then when I read this book, Many times I read my personal many times. They never understand like this. Even it is written in the beginning, in page four. 
I said, just you coming to Takurji, singing, doing something for them like this. It's yeah. the ocean service. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So again, a living jiva has activities in both realms. Internal activities are transcendental in Svarup. They respect our constitutional position. They are in direct loving devotion of God. They are direct seva, direct service. And then as human beings, material beings in the world, we experience parts of both. And our task, our challenge in bhakti is to refine and realize and deepen the, the constitutional side of our existence. <coughs> so this is what Prabhupada says now. <clears throat> He says, now, in the conditioned state, so in our material state of everyday life, sometimes devotional service and the conditional service in relation to the body will parallel one another. They go at the same time. We have some transcendental constitutional uh, activities and some condition. But then again, he continues. Sometimes these activities can be opposed to one another. So we all know this, I think. Sometimes the same activities even can have a conditional meaning and a transit transcendental meaning. We can be making dinner for the children with, with loving devotion, and then we're contributing directly to evolving our, our svarup and realizing our story. Or we can make dinner for the children with resentment and anger and fatigue and frustration, and then we are going nowhere. Prabhupada continues, as far as possible, a devotee is very cautious so that he or she does not do anything that could disrupt his wholesome condition. He or she knows that that perfection in his activities depends on progressive realization of Krishna consciousness. Mm. This is the whole Bhagavad Gita is boiled down to one line. He or she knows that the perfection in his or her activities depends on progress, progressive realization of Krishna consciousness. So when all our activities there's a man, there's a material component and a transcendental component. As we realize our svaru, the transcendental component grows and grows and grows, deepens in the loving devotion. And as it does, we become closer and closer to what Prabhupada calls Krishna consciousness. So this is, uh, this is progressive realization. This is very interesting. We could uh, interpret many things. One sense, say bodily consciousness to soul consciousness, from soul consciousness to Swarupa consciousness. Also, we may say Bhaiti Bhakti to Raganuga Bhakti, Rabanuga Bhakti to Rupanuga Bhakti. Mm -hmm. So, or, or even uh, this constitutional position, we are, at first, we are uh, taught, we are, we are dasanu, dasanu, dasa. Go people to Padakamara, yo, dasa, dasa, dasanu, dasa. So, at first, we learn this sadaka deha. We are dasa, anu dasa, anu dasa. Do the right thing. Yes. And then slowly, slowly we realize we are, we have a spiritual body and swarupa. Swarupa means we are, especially 
for us, if we are rather dashi, then we are kind of rather dashi and dashi and dashi. So this is this progressive realization of Krishna consciousness and also this Krishna consciousness. So Guru Dev say, real Krishna consciousness, who is most Krishna conscious? This is Radha Rani. So to realize Radha, so there is so many progressive, mm-hmm. like uh, so Gopi Baba, Saki Baba, or Manjari Baba. In other words, like uh, uh, Adik Sneha, mm-hmm. uh, Sama Sneha, and Radha, and, oh, sorry, uh, Bishama Sneha, Sama Sneha, Radha Adik Sneha. So this is a progressive realization. This is Prabhupada, you know, using, but uh, for us, differently, yeah, we can interpret. This is interesting. Also, Prabhupada mentioned this. I also, you know, Radha Charampabha mentioned, we we, we read many times, but uh, this constitution position, so we could not understand. So we are thinking, oh, this just dasa and dasa and dasa. Mm-hmm. But actually, this is called if we say we are in Swarupa, in, in Radha Dasi. So in this constitution position, we could not understand when we are in ISKCON time or, you know, just to say before. Before meeting Pab- uh, Gurudev, we could not understand clearly what is the constitutional position, you know. Uh, unless someone who practices Raganuga Bhakti, we don't understand. We, unless we have a, a Swarupa, mm. we may, or we may not realize Swarupa, we may not understand this one. This is quite very deep. Very yeah, Prabhupada, you know, explained very simple word, but uh, quite very deep. Huh? So I really agree, Radha Charam, of the Thank comment. You. Thank you. So we can be Dasi in many ways, but we can only be Radha Dasi in one way. This complete... Um, complete uh, realization of the sarup, which is realization of ourselves as loving beings. And serving Radha is serving the source of love. Prabhupada says, sometimes, however, it may be seen that a person in Krishna consciousness commits some act which may be taken as most abominable socially or politically. So a terrible, terrible act. But such a temporary fall down does not disqualify him. I want just uh, how to say clarify what does mean embodiment how to say ter- terrible uh, actions terrible yeah in other commentaries that I read for Bhagavad Gita it's written like he will fall down this prostitute or will kill even someone like this okay. yeah it's written by Acharis it's not just my mental concoction I read so you know <clears throat> I don't know this is sometimes we face in these things. Uh, so rather rather Charampab say sometimes go to you know prostitute or sometimes go to you know uh, maybe not to mention <laughs> in a very very terrible thing we also experience. But this say Pabu, this Pabupada say such a temporary fall down. Mm-hmm. But uh, we have a tendency to judge others. Mm-hmm. You know, oh you are sannyashi, oh you are guru, you did such and such, and uh, so and uh, it seems uh, 
p r a b h u p a d or Krishna is very kind, actually. <clears throat> and、uh, so we have tendency to judge all、oh, these devotees like this, this, that devotees like this, or、oh, he's completely <laughs> fall down or something, something. You know, we sometimes think like this. But、uh, here mentioned such a temporary fall down. Does not disqualify him. This is、uh, so devotional service is actually full of hope, one sense. Sometimes they say, I don't know, I don't know Europe or West, especially in Japan, if Say someone commit some mistake, like a terrible thing, like killing somebody or you know, do so, so many nonsense things, then society stamp it. Oh, this is, you know, this is killer, this is so, you know, kind of nonsense person. Like once rubber stamped, and sometimes that person difficult to go up again. But here, It seems Krishna or Pabupada mentions does not disqualify him. I, I feel this is kind of rather than his quality.、Mm. Like, say, like sometimes child, there's so much nonsense, you know, sometimes stealing. Broken something, throw away something, or sometimes injured, you know, sometimes like fighting, you know, or sometimes police catch, you know, children. But the mother is so big heart. Mother did not consider all、oh, my signs, you know, completely bad. No, he did just a mistake, you know. You know, you know, next time you can correct, you know, no problem like this. This, it seems, is Radha's mood. You know, like、uh, we usually say Krishna is like a father, very, if I say, strict father. But in this verse, it seems Krishna is kind of feeling some kind of Radha lines mood. Because devotional service means full of,、uh, full of mood of Radha Rani. Because devotional service comes from Radha. So, this is, you know, I feel today, this is so much mood of Radha Rani. Like a strict father, you know, you are, you are, you are disqualified. I kick you out. This is not to mention like this. You are not disqualified. You can correct. Like Gurudev also said. You know, you, you know, we can correct. We should not judge others. Judge myself. Then correct myself. This is like kind of, I feel this sentence. This is so much rather than his quality. So Krishna said, Patita Pavana. Or rather, or Mahaprabhu said, Namo Mahabadanaya. This, this bus, I have so much feeling. It may seem that a person in Krishna consciousness commits some act which may be taken as most abominable. Abominable society or politically, but such temporary, temporary fall down does not disqualify him. Oh my God, this is, you know, this is so much, yeah, rather than feeling. I want to add one story. It's happened in South India. One Brahmachari so, so,、uh, did service to the Takurji. He is every day collecting flowers for the source of Takurji. And two girls once going close to him and saw him how he is so service, doing service, collecting flowers. One of these girls told to other, I can promise 
he looks like very pure, very paka, very concentrated on his service, but I can make him fall down very quickly. Other girl thought, don't do this. It's a bonnable thing. It's prohibited by Shastra. Don't do this. But this lady already decided. I make short. And she did it. After some time, by some trick, hook or trick, she did it in such a way what this um, brahmachari become attached to her so much. And ours become know this fact in this town. And what Krishna, his beloved deity, did it. He come to the heart of king and give order. Change the situation. My bhakta will do it to me. And I gave promise he will never be, be, will be not destroyed. I gave promise in Bhagavad Gita. And you must glorify him. All this city, all this town. Krishna make his reputation against up. What's happened? And what? How understanding this um, beginning of uh, in 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 the verse? He's properly situated. What does it mean properly situated? This is what Guru Dev taught to us. Be fixed on your goal, Straibala. Wow. If someone's in Straibala, even by his previous karma, some previous habit, something I don't know, but even it's I heard even up to level of Bhava, something still left. And he how Sri Prabhupada is written on um, Janandaji told temporary fall down. But according to Krishna, I Krishna is I consider him sadhu. I am considered. And other um, vision, other angle, what Udavaji told, it's for example our Gurudev. From point of view, society, Varnashrama, religious society, to left sannyas. No possible, no any reason. No any reason. You couldn't. If you left sannyas, means you're a very bad person. <laughs> and many, many, many people in this city will not, not understand what he's really sadhu, and he did it is for the highest goal. But Krishna is telling he's properly situated, and I'm telling he's really real sadhu. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So also I want to mention last time Radha Charan Prabhu told us Sudarshan and Kudarshan. Maybe you don't know you, you, you are not here. Mm. So Sudarshan means Su means good, good to see. Kudarshan means bad to see. So we have Two kinds of tendency. We want to see good quality. Someone who has good, you know, we, we try to see someone's good quality. Or another kudarsha means we want to see someone is bad quality. So it seems Krishna is sudarsha. Krishna always want to see someone who is good quality. But sometimes, like a condition store, like like me, you know, try to see bad quality. Oh, you are this bad. You are you are that bad. But Krishna's vision is sudarshan. No, my devotee is completely fixing my goal. He he want to please please with me. So he's completely shit, you know, situated. Like uh, Radha Charan Prabhu said, sometimes sadhu's, sadhu's activity is ordinary people could not understand. Like Sadhu Maharaj's behavior, ordinary people could not understand. Some people may criticize, you know, but uh, some person who could understand reality, understand. Like sannyas is like a Baruna Ashram Dharma, material platform. But if we beyond the material platform, then no problem. Like uh, Goswamis, Goswamis, they don't wear Brahma threat. 
they give up because, you know, Rupa Sanatana, they, they are born, you know, very artistic Brahman family. But the Hoen become ghost, you know, kind of Goswami and uh, give up, you know, position. I think we lost the sound. So, uh, are we a uh, Sai Baba or are we a Sanchari Baba? To whom we are doing this seva? This kind of intention, sorry, I'm a little maybe debate, but uh, this is very interesting. Sorry. <clears throat> That's quite beautiful what you say about the uh, mood of the Radharani, the mood of the mother, the motherly loves. But this is also because the social and political crime, the abominable thing socially or politically, is the rule that's external. It's rule that's not based on association, not mm. based on a loving connection, devotion. The social rules come without contact, without relation. Whereas the rules that, that Prabhupada is talking about are the ones of loving, loving devotion, the ones of Radharani Bhav, the motherly Bhav. And these are forgives, forgivable, always. This is the external thing and internal thing. I remember one story. One Brahmana was there. And one Brahmana is there and then looking for another house. His prostitute was there. So that Brahma is doing Brahma work, but always meditating. All oh, this prostitute doing nonsense now. But the prostitute was thinking, she was thinking, oh, I am so fallen. Why I cannot get the mercy of the Lord? Why I can please the Lord? This is the mentality of prostitute. <laughs> Narada Muni or somebody came. When can I get salvation? Ask Brahma. Ask Brahma. <laughs> and then, Bra then that's the sad what Narada Muni said. You can, you can have more, I don't know, maybe 10,000 or something. This process to the next, next life can, can. Salvation. And Brahman completely shocked. What? I'm Brahman. You know, I'm highest grade of Brahman. She's a prostitute. But the consciousness is completely different. Brahman is always watching external thing. Oh, mm. he's she's doing abominable act. She's a prostitute. I'm Brahman. She's so foreign. But the process was thinking, oh my Lord, I'm so far, I'm doing this, you know, this work because of this situation does not allow me to serve you. So when can I serve you, Lord? Please give me your mercy. So internally, process is connect some relationship. Mm -hmm. So, but we, we don't see, we can see only external things. But the sadhu, real sadhu or Krishna or Radha could understand internal things. Yes. So this is... I listen to the way the Brahman talks. I am, I am, I am. She is just identical. Yes, ego, body. Ego. Body. Ego. <laughs> so this is very, you know, I remember the story. So... Mm. This is very interesting, interesting, you know, external thing means sadaka deha, 
internal thing kind of sit that they have or internal meditation and external activity. Sometimes like a Maria Magdana, Maria Magdana, she's also externally prostitute, but internally so pure, mm. purest person. Mm. But the ordinary person can see only external thing. But Jesus but could Jesus understand. Yes, Jesus could understand internal Baba. Mm. So Krishna could see internal Baba. But the, our conditions so always see external things. Mm. Yes. So, and Baba, uh, Prabhupada says then, the material contamination is so strong sometimes that even a yogi fully engaged in the service of the Lord <coughs> becomes ensnared, becomes captured. But Krishna's, Krishna consciousness is so strong that such an occasional fall down is at once rectified, corrected, you see. Just being a bhakta, says Prabhupada, means to overcome these weaknesses. So there is no moral sin in itself. Mary Magdalena, the only sin is to forget the soul. The social rules, the political rules, these are external. But in bhakti, the morality is in the heart. In the, the heart is honest, the heart is sincere and pure, then everything flows from its goodness. And sincerity is something we all understand. This is what Gurudev means when he says, check yourself, be sincere with yourself, look at yourself honestly, and you know best what you are doing, where you are. It means that your divine heart is the only judge of your condition. And what's very beautiful is that this judgment of the checking yourself, it happens in a dialogue between the condition and the constitutional of where we are in the material world and where we are in relation to our society. To our, to our siddhavis. Therefore, says Prabhupada, the process of devotional service is always a success. Well, the process of devotional service is always a success. Because devotional service is by definition sincere, by definition, like Gurudev says, checking oneself, being honest with the heart, being honest with the emotions. And if we do these things, we can only succeed. So Prabhupada says, no one should deride a devotee. No one should criticize the devotee for some accidental fall down from the ideal path. For as is explained in the next verse, such occasional fall downs will be stopped in due course. Correct. As soon as the devotee is completely situated in Krishna consciousness, as soon as he establishes Sky Bhav in Krishna consciousness. Wow. Therefore, says Prabhupada, a person who is situated in Krishna consciousness, who is in Sthabhav, and is engaged with determination in the process of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, should be considered to be in the transcendental position. Even if by chance or accident he has found to have fallen. 
So the two are compatible. It's possible to fall and still find one's way to to constitutional position, to the subtle. Abhupad continues, the words sadur eva, he is saintly, are very emphatic, very strong, very emphasized. They are warning to the non-devotees that because of an accidental fall down, a devotee should not be derided not be criticized. He should still be considered saintly, even if he has fallen down accidentally. And the word mantavya is still more emphatic. Mantavya means uh, accused, accused, judged, like you said. Because where does this accusation come from? The accusing, the judging, it comes from outside. Just like you said, Jayananda, it's from coming from a non, non-devotee, they don't understand mm. the spiritual smell. Coming from outside. And we know, like Jayananda said, that we can only judge the divine from within the divine. We can only judge devotion from within devotion. It cannot be understood from outside. So our only morality, if we have a morality, is sincerity, honesty with ourselves, to be ourselves, to be our spiritual selves, which is very difficult. <laughs> let's not be, let's not be, let's be clear. Prabhupada goes on now. If one does not follow this rule, He means the rule of not judging devotees. If one does not follow this rule and derides a devotee, criticizes a devotee for accidental fall down, then he is disobeying the order of the Supreme Lord. The only qualification of a devotee is to be unflinchingly, so never changing, unflinchingly and exclusively engaged in devotions. This is Tai Baba. Yeah. Unflinching yeah. and exclusive. Yeah, this is this is Tai Baba. But at that time we don't understand what is Tai Baba, you know, before we don't understand. But this is very clearly, this is Tai Baba. Gold is fixing, Ishtadeva is fixing. And uh, our Swarupa is fixing. This is it. Hmm. To be fixed. Yeah. Quality, devoted, sincere, honest. Hmm. And when we're in that condition, when we're in Saibab, then we can only do divine actions. We can only do actions in, in Tibet based. Hmm. We can only put into practice the love in everything we do in our work and our friendships. And that's it. The Prabhupada goes on. The mark of a spot which may be seen on the moon does not become an impediment, a block to the moonlight. Similarly, the accidental fall down of a devotee from the path of saintly character does not make him abominable, terrible. On the other hand, Prabhupada says, one should not misunderstand that a devotee in transcendental devotional service can act in all kinds of abominable ways. This verse only refers, says Prabhupada, 
to an accident due to the strong power of material connections. Mm -hmm. So this is a, this verse is a kind of accidental, but the Prabhupada mentioned this is kind of one of Nama Parada. We committing offense, uh, committing abominable acts on the strength of the holy name. Or maybe we can. That's yeah. different. Yes, that's yeah, strong. completely different. This is kind of one kind of aparada, nama parada. Very important. So to put it a different way, here we commit accidents in spite of holy name, and the other is because of holy name. Prabhupada says, devotional service is more or less a declaration of war against the illusory energy. Wow. Maya. Wow. The challenge is to be sincere. Sincerity is the opposite of illusion. When we're sincere, we know ourselves, we look, check our svarup, check our relation to our svarup, and then we are at war with illusory energy, with maya. That's, of course, extremely difficult to accomplish, particularly in the West with all our distractions and social media where who I think I am is dependent on what other people I am. Then Prabhupada finishes the purports of verse 30 by saying, as long as one is strong enough to fight illusory energy, maya, there may be accidental fall downs. But one is strong enough, he is no longer subjected to such fall downs as previously explained. So we cannot fight illusory. We fall down. If we are not strong enough, we are first. Finally, Prabhupada says no one should take advantage of this verse and commit nonsense and think he is still a devotee. It's not a permission. If he does not improve in his character by devotional service, then it is to be understood that he is not a high devotee. Mm. We'll continue with verse 31. He, meaning devotee, quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Wow. <laughs> he, she quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O oh, son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. By taking a relation of devotion, then, a right relation of love to Krishna, we become righteous. Righteous means acting in accordance with divine principles with divine divinity. And so in this case, righteous means acting in harmony with the divine sarup within. That's what righteousness is. Checking and acting in accordance and agreement with the divinity we find within ourselves. And realizing that it's not outside of us, but in our own hearts. It's, uh, so righteous is not lying down to the laws of society or politics, like you said. 
or to an impersonal God, but rather to surrendering to a personal God, surrendering to love. Mm -hmm. to the divine. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada says, this should not be under misunderstood. Sorry. This should not be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. In the seventh chapter, the Lord says that one who is engaged in mischievous activity, bad activities, cannot become a devotee of the Lord. One who is not a devotee of the Lord has no good qualification whatsoever. The challenge is not about becoming a good devotee, it's becoming a devotee. And we just heard what the qualifications for devotee are. Mm. Focusing, fixing, finding a stable relation to the divinity in our hearts, the style of heart. That divinity is love and it takes the mood of style to hold it fixed. And then once one has taken a step of opening the heart, surrendering, fixing, then being righteousness, being righteousness easy. It's no effort. No. It's natural. Then Prabhupada says, the question remains, how can a person engaged in abominable, abominable activities, terrible activities, either by accident or intention, be a pure devotee? This question must be justly raised, may justly be raised. It's correct to raise the question. Well, the challenge is, does the devotee, does the person, the individual doing the terrible action, doing it in the conscious, conscience of what a devotee is? Does he know what devotion is? Does he understand devotion? Is he seeking, he or she seeking devotion? Is it natural for this person to be devoted? Does, she have, does he or she have the bar of devotion, taste for love, sky bar? To, to a bigger or little, smaller degree, this taste for love is shared by everyone, but it must be strong enough so that we can focus on seeking that devotional spirit within us. We have the taste to give love and receive love and not to cling to love, to surrender. Prabhupada says, the miscreants, that means the ones who don't believe and take part in bad activities, the miscreants, as stated in the seventh chapter, who never come to the devotional service of the Lord, have no good qualifications, as stated in Srimad Bhagavad. But a devotee who has taste for love, it seems to me, is, it's difficult to imagine being in that situation or being a miscreant or not believing or doing bad activities. The moment we're touched by love, this desire to do the bad things fades away, melts away. The moment one meets another devotee or sees another devotee, this becomes weaker and weaker. So again, Prabhupada says, generally a devotee who is engaged in the nine kinds of devotional activities is engaged in the process of cleansing all material contamination from the heart. So it's not that the heart is, is dirty, it's that the heart is covered with dirt <laughs> of material. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it means empty, emptying the heart so we can love can come in, right. clearing away the rubbish mm -hmm. of maya, clearing away the rubbish of material covering so we can come in and that love can flow out. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada continues, he or she, that is the devotee, puts the Supreme Personality of Godhead within his heart. 
and all sinful contaminations are naturally washed away. Continuous thinking of the Supreme Lord makes him pure by nature. Чтобы ты тот ас, ты был шиматерадика, 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 чтобы ты тот According to the Vedas, says Prabhupada, there is a certain regulation that if one falls down from his exalted position, he has to undergo certain ritualistic processes to purify himself. But here, there is no such condition. Because the purifying process is already there in the heart of the devotee, due to his remembering the Supreme Personality of God. So no external rituals needed, no external rules, no external laws, no external religion. All the rules are already in the heart. That's why the purifying process is already taking place already in motion. It's our job as devotees just to stay out of the way of the process that wants to take place. So again, we see this clear opposition between Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Rupanuga Bhakti. It's not the external religious rules that uh, are purifying us, it's the Raganuga Bhakti and practice that purifies us. So this is interesting for me, like remembering the Supreme Lord. So remembering Supreme Lord means without ego. If we have ego, we cannot remember the Lord. If we cannot remember the Lord, then we have to think about ourselves. My pleasure, my property, you know, like my I. Mine. But if we could remember the Lord, then automatically ego is gone. Mm. So then means purifying. Mm. Purifying means ego is exist or not exist. That's my understanding. So this is remembering if we think about it. So this if we try to remember Ishtadeva. Mm. Then slowly, slowly, our ego is, will disappear. Mm. But if we remember, if we could not remember Ishtadeva, then we, we, we have to remember ourselves. Mm. My pleasure, my body, my sense. There has to be something. Yeah, there has, has to be something because, because we have to think something. There is something about the road or ourselves. You pick. Yes, you choose. Yes. We have to choose it. It's Guru that says too, you must choose. Then if we have a good association, Sajati Sangha, then easy to remember. Uh-huh. But if we are not in good association, then we have to think another thing. Mm-hmm. So this remembering also very deep. Mm-hmm. Especially remembering is a kind of Raga Bhakti. Because by the bhakti, they are thinking kind of, kind of external act. But the uh, Raganuga bhakti is kind of, say, Ananta Baba say, mental religion. So mental process, especially remembering, mm. or smarana, or, you know, dhyana, you know, Durban, Sumriti, and Samadhi. This is a kind of Raga Bhajan. Mm-hmm. So this is Prabhupada, very simple word. Just remembering the Supreme Person God constantly. This is a purifying process. This is a, indirectly he's saying kind of, you know, 
about the Raga Bhajan. Absolutely. Yeah. And then Raghu Raghavat, we, we look for the guidance in the, in the heart, uh, not outside in the rituals. When we finish the purport here, Prabhupada says, therefore the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram Hare Hare, should be continued without stoppage. This will protect the devotee from all accidental fall downs. He will thus remain perpetually free from material contaminations. So, the only real fall down is for getting. So we have a soul but becoming materially contaminated. I remember one past time of the Lord. One day, Mahaprabhu went to Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur was lying down. Oh, Haridas, what's your problem? Are you sick? Mahaprabhu, I'm all right. My problem is I cannot chant in Hare Krishna Mantra. Like many times, like before. And then Mahaprabhu said, No, you already sit there. You already perfect stage. So you don't need to chant Mahamantra. But I said, No, Mahaprabhu, I have to chant. This is the mentality of a devotee. Lord said, You don't need to chant. But the devotee is thinking, Oh, no. I have to chant, but you know, this is. Something that somebody will say, nature. Every day he go around the Gavardhan. Even it was hitting the sun so much, and Krishna himself come to him and told, "Please don't do this. You in old age." But something that replied, "No, no, I will do this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, devotee won't do as much as possible, especially once fixed sadhana, he wants to continue perpetually. But uh, our body becomes, you know, getting mm. old and sometimes, you know, feel difficulty. But the Lord will say, no, 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 you don't need to do this. But <laughs> devotee's mentality is so humble. No, I'm not perfect either. I have to do my own. And by my devotee never perishes. <clears throat> he means that he never stops being devoted. And it means that he never dies. Yeah, and also never want to stop devotion. Right. The will is always there. Yes. Um. I want to say about all these two words, please. Um, I heard another commentary for these two words. <clears throat> Krishna is telling in previous words. Mm. He is telling to he is addressing to all people. Don't try to judge my bhakta mm. from all your moral point of views. And he's telling Arjuna to say it too. He says, Arjuna declare it. He doesn't say that strange word. And in this verse, he's telling for someone in his society who is accepting this, but is back to his sadhu. For such person, he's telling, he quickly becomes righteous, means dharmatma. Mm. This person who will accept what my bhakti is sadhu, I declare he will be very soon dharmatma. Mm. If he's not judging my bhakti. Is other commentary. Ah, if Tama criticize the devotee, then he cannot become Dharma. Mm -hmm. And also, one point also. So, Uttavaji said, Why Krishna said, Oh, son of Kunti, you should declare mm -hmm. boldly that my devotee never perish. Krishna can, you know, Krishna could say like this. 
but it's a good system. Yeah, but 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 many people may criticize. If Krishna say, "My devotee never perished," then some devotee say, "Oh, Krishna, you are in Vrindavan." You steal butter. <laughs> you steal cross of gopi. You tell right. Oh, I'm eating, you know, I, I'm eating like a soil. He said, no, I never eat. I never steal. Krishna tell that many times. So some non-devotee may say, oh, Krishna, you tell right in Vrindavan. What can we believe? Your words. But Arjuna is is very honest person. Arjuna is a kind of hacker of, you know, per se, Kshatriya, especially like expert. Yeah, Bhagavan. Bhagavan. So if Arjuna you say, then Everybody believe. Oh, yes, yes, that's true. You know, but uh, if I say some people may criticize, you are already tell lie before. How can we believe you may also again tell lie? So, so it's Krishna lie sometimes, but alternate. No. Yeah. And because Krishna is not partial for devotees, it means he's too much attached to devotees, he's not equal. Mm. By this reason, if he before gave a uh, promise, I will not take a weapon, but Bhishma told, oh, okay, I will do it in such a way, but you will take a weapon. And he did it. Krishna took a wheel trying to kill Bhima. What is why he's telling, you Arjuna must declare this, not I am, because sometime I can not do what I told because of so much att- uh, attachment to devotees. But if you will do this, I will, I will do anything what is needed to make your promise true. Yeah, very good point. Because Krishna is partial. If Arjuna killed, so he has to protect Arjuna because he promised to Kunti. In Krishna, in Krishna war, your son, five son, never die. Krishna promised to Kunti Devi. So Krishna must protect Pandava, Pandavas. And also Bhima's, Krishna knows Bhima's heart. Okay, I, I will break Krishna's promise. This is my vow. So difficult, you know, Krishna, so what to do? You know, Bhishma, Bhishma want to make, you know, make, make break my promise. Or also I promise Kunti. So what to do? This is, you know, so much loving exchanges happening. And one more dimension in this way of thinking. Is Krishna ready to do anything for such bhakta as Arjuna? What we can say about someone who is Radhadasi? So we have told, if someone Radhadasi, Krishna will do everything. (laughs) In Gita, we cannot write, and this kind of write, but it's true. Because Krishna Bekurada Dasi. Oh, Manjari, oh, Rati, Torasi, Rupa, please help me. I'm in problem. Please let me see Swamini even little. This is Krishna's mood. Sometimes Krishna, Krishna has many devotees, but uh, sometimes Krishna disregards his devotee mm-hmm. and uh, more love for Radha's devotee. This is Krishna's, uh, you know, reality. So very interesting. Mm-hmm. Any more sharing from Zoom land? <laughs> Zoom land. Before we stop, I want to. Uh, I'm sorry. I make mistake with question. I remember about the Gurudeva's work. 
the devil said, don't create. Ah. I couldn't understand at that time mentally. Maybe the devil's word has many, has many meanings. But one meaning I come by this sharing. Remembrance means non create. Mm -hmm. Creator is Krishna's nature, like I'm owner and mm -hmm. master. And someone's instrument. And he's not created, he's just instrument. And remembrance is no creation. Just remembrance is not put anything. Mm -hmm. Just as we do it, just re receive and remember. Like and also, Gurudev, Gurudev is a very nice word I, I want to say. One day, Sandy Bodhi told one story, maybe a little bit, you know, I never heard just one story. So Gurudev told us, I'm fixing Anantas Baba's Birapax Manjari and uh, Radha Rasasnadi. Outside this one, I <laughs> I don't I cannot say kind of I don't say kind of I don't accept. So he's completely fixing the one point in you know, Anantas Baba's explanation. So he sometimes say, I don't need other book. I only, you know, I'm fixing this two book because. This book is Stai Baba. If you read, if you fix this book, you may get Stai Baba. Like this comes like that. Mm. So he did not speculate. This is very, I was a little amazed because. It not create. Yeah, because, because sometimes, you know, like a very advanced Vaishnava. Good to see all leader, you know. Mm. And then he may say, "Oh, actually, this one, this one, this one." But uh, he's very much fixing this point. So I don't want to deviate this Nadarasas Danidi and Birapak Manjari by you know Arandas Baba's commentary. Oh, I was a little bit shocked. Oh my God, Guru Dev saying like this. Then what can we say? <laughs> There we stop for finish chapter nine next week. Jai Sri Radha. Jai Gurudev. Jai Gurudev.